this next phase of your life, I mean, I, I doubt you can remember a time when fighting wasn't a part of your life, right? I mean, so are you looking forward to it as like, I don't have to deal with this responsibility anymore? Or there's a little fear of like, man, there's going to be this hole missing? What's, what's your thoughts? I would say there was, there was fear because it's freaking unknown. Like, I've been training and competing my whole life. Like, even when I was supposed to be in high school or middle school, I'm, like, concentrating on how to get better at wrestling or football or whatever, fighting, when I should be doing my homework. So that's where I've always been. So one thing that I feel that I'm going to get out of this is I'm going to actually just be able to train for fun again, which is which is huge. Like, I, my body feels better when I'm training for fun. When I'm training for a fight, it just doesn't feel as good as it used to. And, and I don't have to recover now. So, like, I could actually torture myself, which just seems weird. Like, cause bef that's my goal is to, like, torture myself, beat myself down, and that's how I gain, gain strength. But now, since I'm older, I can't recover as fast. So, that's it. So, I'm going to be able to torture myself a little bit more and give myself more rest. I like it. Uh, give us your thoughts on Nico as a final opponent. I mean, stylistically, it seems like it could be an exciting matchup. Is that the type of fight you want in your last fight? Nothing against Nico, but I, I didn't really care who I was fighting. I'm focused. I'm always just focused on myself and like trying to get my stuff situated, trying to feel good on Saturday is really what I'm focusing on. And if I feel good, then fight's going to go good. So that's what I focus on. And I let the UFC kind of take care of that stuff. Dave Martin, they talk. They're like, hey, what do you think about that? And I'm kind of like, kind of like whatever like let's just go nice. last thing for me you touched on the fact that you'll keep training i mean do you see yourself staying around the sport being a part of like corners and coaching and camps or anything or do you want to withdraw from the sport and, and be away from it uh no i'm definitely going to be around the sport this sport's given so much to me uh the reason i am where i am today and been able to last as long is because of all the people helping me so i'm going to give back all these little tidbits i've learned over time and we have a really good gym at Killcliffe FC and just like being able to help guys get stronger so that they can make money and and compete at a high level and and that's what I feel like martial arts is about is giving back and showing techniques. Robbie back here. Robbie back here. Uh, congratulations on an amazing career and thank you for so many great iconic moments. Um, so your first fight was 22 years ago. Did you ever imagine or could you ever fathom how much the sport has grown since your very first fight? No, I, I remember what the UFC champions were driving around then, like what kind of cars they were driving. And like, I was just happy to, I'm like, hold on a second. So when I was 16, they, Milicic brought a whole bunch of fighter, five fighters into our wrestling room to wrestle with us. And I was like, and I was a fighter. I mean, I did martial arts growing up, and I was wrestling, and I'm like, hold on a second. What do you guys do? <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit. This is, this is what I'm going to do with my life. So, like, but I, no, I didn't know. It was just like, I didn't go into it for money necessarily. I went into it because I loved competing, and I loved fighting, and I loved sharpening my skills. And... Where the sports come since then is, is ridiculous. I mean, when I first signed with the UFC, I went into their offices, and there was a security guard outside and probably four people in the whole building, workers. I mean, there was, a, there was Dana, there was Don, Donna, there was freaking Joe Silva and a lawyer. I mean, that was it. So, I mean, this... Sport is huge, UFC is huge, and it's nice to be a part of it and see the growth and be able to last and be a part of it. And your first UFC fight was at UFC 30, 37, and now we're at UFC 290. And I can name about a million favorite Robbie Lawler moments, but is there one moment in particular that you could say, yeah, that's my favorite career moment? Uh, Not really, because I don't really like rate myself and do those types of things i mean big fight for me though i think in my career with the ufc was probably my first hendrix fight because i didn't get it done 
plain and simple, I didn't get it done, and I thought I should have. And he outcompeted me and, and, and got the job done. So after that, I was on a mission. And I think that was a big fight for me. Thank you very much for the memories. Thank you. Rob, yeah, no, right here. Uh, I know you said you don't like to look back, you know, too much. It's always been about looking forward, but tomorrow night you're having a fight inducted into the UFC Hall of Fame as well. Um, are you planning on attending the ceremony, or is that too difficult with the weight cut? Oh, uh, no, I, I'm not sure what's going to happen, but uh, it's I've been I've been doing this so long. It's my weight's good, so I'm good. And you're a very even keel guy, I know, but is any of this stuff like stirring up emotions like tomorrow night when you're going to be inducted, uh, the final walkout, like are you kind of processing it in that way or not really? I think it could and it has come up, but I try not to because it's, it's a lot. I mean, I've been freaking doing this a long time. Yeah, and uh, we talked before the last fight when it was going to break this like main card streak you had been on to go to the prelims, and then you got ultimately bumped up again. But it seems like it might work out that way. Um, what does it kind of say that you spent 20 years, you know, not being on a prelim fight until now, and obviously it's the featured one. It's still on ABC and ESPN and all these massive platforms, so a lot of people will see it. I think it just shows that. I go out there and fight. I'm going to put on a show. I've, I've been doing this for a long time, and I wouldn't necessarily think that it it's that cool because you know how I am. I'm like, whatever, like, let's just go out there and fight. I'm going to put on a show. If there's one person in there, there's one person watching, whatever, let's freaking fight. But I'm growing up now, and I, and I appreciate everything I accomplished and being – on the biggest stage at the end of my career after the long career is awesome. And just last thing, uh, you mentioned working with all these fighters at Killcliffe and everything. You know, you got like Ian Gary and Shavkat and all these people. Um, who do you, which one of these, and I know maybe a difficult thing to answer, I don't want you to disrespect any of the others, but which one of these guys has like the highest ceiling in your opinion in the sport? I would just say whoever is willing to put in the work and stay focused and not let the media, not let hype drive them and who can stay grounded and focus on what they need to do because it's a long road. And I mean, and if you want to stay up there at the top, you got to focus on the little details and you need to keep everything simple and not think you're hot shit. You just need to freaking go out there and work with all the freaking everybody and get after it. And I think anybody who's willing to do that for many years is going to achieve a lot. Robert, over here. Uh, Robert Whitaker was in here earlier, and I was asking him, like, maybe some of his favorite memories of you. And he said that when he was at welterweight, he saw you fight, and his first thought was F fighting that guy. Um, he also said that when he watches you fight, he thinks that if you could, you would bite your opponent. <laughs> so I'm curious what you think of that assessment. Uh, I appreciate it. I don't think I'd bite. I'd probably, I'd probably headbutt. I'd probably eye gouge, really. Like, I mean, I would bite. I don't know. Yeah. Then, <laughs> uh, the final one for me, uh, when you look like now that you're, you're, you're putting your career to an end. Um, there's, there's still fighters like Matt Brown. He has the, the knockout record. Jim Miller has the win record. He wants to now fight on UFC 300 because he fought on UFC 100 and 200. Nice. Do you ever do you look at like that generation of fighters that came up with you and like there's some there's just like a different camaraderie with all you guys that came up during that Zufa era through the Reebok into the ESPN era. Uh, yeah, it's it's hard to say because, like, even those guys, I feel like I was fighting way before them. So it's like, I mean, when I first came in, it was like, I think I signed with the UFC in, like, 01 or something. So it was just weird. But I think when you have appreciation for guys, when I see these guys, I'm like, man, you're freaking still here. I'm like, you're freaking tough as hell. Because just the training camps alone, like, you don't realize – to be here for this long, the training camps alone, keeping your body, keeping focus with everyone pulling at you. Hey, you got to go here. You got to go here. Let's go do this. Your buddies want to hang out with you. It's just you need to stay focused. And guys who have done that for a long time, I really appreciate it. 
Robbie, uh, so much of your early years, of course, uh, back in the Quad Cities, Bettendorf, Iowa. How do you look back now at, at, at those formative years for you? Uh, I think those that was the best time as far as training. It was when I first started training, everybody in there was tough. And I don't mean tough technically. I mean just tough. If you were fighting in 2000, then you're not making any money. You're doing this for the freaking love of competing. And we probably had like 10 high level guys who just like pushed each other. And there was, there was no room for weakness. Only the strong survived. And I think that was, I learned so much from that. Just getting in there and getting thrown in the deep end and like trying to figure out how to survive and learn and then show up the next day, get beat up and then try to learn. Like I did some good stuff, which kept me coming back. Like, but there was days that were rough. So it was, those shaped and molded me like Jen's really helped me. I, I'm so excited for him to be inducted into the UFC Hall of Fame. I mean, he wanted this, which is very important to him. And I slept on his couch many a times. He helped me out with my boxing so much. Obviously, Matt Hughes threw me around. Actually, when I was a senior in high school, my coach, because I was actually a decent wrestler, was like, hey, go with this guy. And freaking Hughes was freaking slamming me around like hard, where my coach was like, okay, like that's enough of that. Like he, That's how it was. It was like no mercy type thing. So definitely, and obviously, Pat Militich, another UFC Hall of Famer and champion, put a lot of time and effort into me and, and that gym, it was just, we just fed off each other. We just always believed we were going out there to smash somebody. It was us versus everyone else and we're gonna crush everyone and that was our mindset and I think that uh, helped throughout my career. Well, thank you, I appreciate it. Hey Robbie, back here. Uh, Robbie, when people talk about the fight with Rory McDonald and going into the Hall of Fame, uh, when fighters tell you how much they love it, does that make it extra special to hear specifically from, you know, all of your coworkers that get in the cage? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not quite there yet where I'm like still like absorbing like other people excited about things I've accomplished but as I get older and like I'm like trying to figure out how to like you know I'm just out there competing just giving it my all and it's what I do and and I mean I guess it's nice but I'm happy with how I, it was so long ago too I'm like on to the next thing but it's it's just weird for me to, I just don't know how to accept it. And like, you know, it's just, cause I'm not, I would, didn't get into this sport for praise and hype and those types of things. I'm just trying to be the best I can be. And so maybe I need to figure out a way to let people appreciate me, huh? I mean, I, I think you'd find a lot of people are ready to. Uh, to talk about that, when Rory came to Kill Cliff, fans were wondering, is it a little bit of like Rocky III? They ended up having a third war behind the scenes in the gym. Can you speak to any of that? How good did any sparring session get with Rory when he came over? Oh, no, I, I, I don't usually go hard anyways, and he doesn't usually go hard in his sparring. So it's about getting to your spots and, and uh, having your feet underneath you. He's he's very technical fighter, really good on the ground. So I I learned a lot of stuff from him. But he's actually very analytical. So like his sparring sessions will be more about working on certain things, which is kind of how I fight. It's like all right, I need to get to this spot. What happens if I do this? What does he do? So he's he's very sharp individual, and he and it was nice to see. Which I already knew that because I fought him twice and trained for him. So it was, 
Final question. There's only one you, but if you were to point out one of the guys on the roster and say, you know, that's the next Robbie Lawler, savage, unbreakable, always brings it, love of the game, is there a guy you would name? Uh, no. Just, just <laughs> I, I would say I don't really watch too much unless one of our guys are fighting. I mean, you guys – these guys freaking are just pumping out shows just like so it's hard i mean and i'm spending family time now so it's like hard for me to get away from those things so i'm focused on other aspects now but i'm sure there's many out there who are willing to give it their all robbie over here um you sort of talked a little bit about it is coaching kind of what you're going to be doing in retirement is there any other things you're looking to do now that you're not going to be having to train for a fight yeah and i mean that i've been coaching for pretty much my whole career because that's kind of what you do like even when I was training for fights I was at the high school like coaching wrestling coaching other fighters just giving little tidbits here and there but yeah we have a gym Kilcliffe FC and I'm gonna help those guys fulfill their dreams and wherever they want to go I'm gonna Henry Hoof and, and I and Greg Jones and all the coaches over there are doing a great job getting these guys ready. I mean, we've got a lot of really good fighters. So martial arts is about giving back, and uh, I think all sports is about giving back and making life easier for others. All this knowledge that I have, there's no sense keeping it to myself. Um, leading up to this fight this week, did you have a lot of the guys from the old Militich camp reach out and kind of congratulate you or anything? Like, has Pat talked to you or anything? Uh, no, not here. And there. I, I talked to Jens here and there. I talked to Pat here and there, but uh, I actually called Jens about a computer question for my son. So like the, the <laughs> He's good for everything. We like don't that. need to talk about fighting yeah. all the time. Um, and you talked about some of the up-and-comers at your gym. Uh, maybe not personality-wise, but fighting-wise. Does Ian Gary remind you a little bit of yourself in terms of, you know, he's, he's a in-your-action, uh, you know, type of uh, fighter, like, you know, really likes to make it entertaining? Yeah, no, he, he comes out and fights. He's he's going out there to take people out and, and look good. And he, he is who he is. Like, let, let these guys be them and <laughs> let me be me. And just last one, is there, looking back on your career now, is there one opponent you wish you would have been able to share the octagon with that you didn't get a chance to? Uh, I mean, back in the day, maybe I was like, but now, like, looking back, I'm like, guys cross your paths for certain reasons and it just is what it is it's just mma like no nah, i'm good well i'll throw one out at you because you guys never fought it was george st pierre a fight you would have wanted to have at some point just with the history of matt and him uh yeah i think that would have because i he was like when i was on the outside of the ufc looking in he was the guy i was training for mm -hmm. like the whole time i was like i want to fight this guy so like yeah like I trained to fight that guy all the time. Congrats he on was the best. Uh, back here. Uh, just one quick question for you. Obviously, you've talked many times about how long your career was, the amount of fights you've had in Vegas. I can't even count. Uh, you know, what's your favorite thing about Las Vegas? Uh, I mean, obviously, the fight's the best part. But the food's amazing here. Lots of really good food. I love eating, so I'm a foodie. So... Food. Rap, just one question. A colleague of mine in Hawaii wanted me to ask you about your time that you spent in Hawaii. After your first initial stint with the UFC, you went to Hawaii, fought like five times, you became a, a champion for the first time in your career. He wanted to know kind of what that did for your resurgence of your career and, you know, what eventually led to where you got to. Oh, uh, it was great. I actually moved up to 185, so there was no more weight cutting. I would just go there and I'd eat galbi and freaking mac salad and rice. So, and I was on vacation. I think the first time I went there, like I didn't stay after. I'm like, and then my buddy's like, I'm like, hey, I'm going home. He's like, no, I'm staying here for a couple of days. And I was like, ah, shit, I should have thought of that. But I mean, I grew as a fighter there. It was, uh, I love the rules. First of all, it's pride rules, which is the best rules uh for those of you guys who don't know knees to the head on the ground soccer kicks those types of things but i grew a lot and i and what i didn't get very much was this i did not have to do very much media like it was just like show up there on vacation maybe a little bit of media but like not really because it's laid back there anyways and then i just go out there and fight and then go eat food.
So like, I just was able to kind of hide and and make some money, and then I was just watching the UFC from there. Cool.